Hey folks, Craig from the Vinyl Record Player, uh, about to break down my top five most listened to artists of 2022. Stick around. And we're back. Uh, yeah, uh, it's that time of the year. Uh, if you listen to Spotify or, or YouTube Music, you probably already have a some kind of an email that or a screen that says, "Hey, these are the things you listen to the most." I discovered, uh, and this is digitally. I'm not even counting records that I listened to almost 17,000 minutes of music this year. Which I'm not sure if that's a lot or a little or what. Uh, digitally, it, it does seem like it's a good amount of minutes. Um, but anyway, these are just my digital. Uh, I obviously don't keep track uh, of, of how many uh, uh, you know records I listen to. But you know what? They tend to correlate because uh, these obsessions and deep dives, they go deep for me. So let's just hit it. Um, let's do a couple honorable mentions um, that I listen to a lot that I think are really worth a deep dive and I'm continuing with in 2023 let's start with paul kelly uh, stealing in the name of the lord is one of the lps i got uh great stuff i also got a compilation that was on kent from him uh paul kelly was a total discovery never heard of the guy before this year uh great songwriter good singer um yeah great artist uh a surprise to me i i try to uh you know, at least be kind of know what i'm talking about uh, in the soul arena, but I'm glad that there's still those like classic discoveries where you're just like, oh my, oh my, Paul Kelly's one of those. This is not a discovery, uh, but this of course is uh, my new favorite album by Benny King, the beginning of it all. You know, Google's telling me that I have listened to, uh, that I am part of the 0.1%, that's right, not the 1%, but the 0.1% uh, top I'm in the top 0.1%, just to repeat that again, of Benny King listeners this year, which is like, man, I didn't think I listened to that much Benny King. I'm, it's not in the top five. This is just an honorable mention. But again, I am going deep with Ben because he's got some great stuff. I got this, and I also got um, the album that he did with uh, the Average White Band, which is actually really good. Um, later period, you know, you're talking 77, 78, but uh, great stuff. Uh, this one though, uh, guess this is goodbye is the key track. I just listen, I listen to that about a billion times. It's a jam. Uh, but let's cut right into the top five of the year uh, of artists that I listen to. Um, this is just digital again, uh, but again, it, in real life, it's super correlatable. Let's talk about uh, Ann Peebles. Um, love Ann Peebles. Knew about Ann Peebles before. This year, I kind of really got into her material, was listening to it a lot. This is a, I think it's 2008, 2009 uh, reprint, obviously. The negative with Anne is that, I mean, the positive with Anne is like, literally, you could go up to 80, um, and you're not hearing, you know, um, a weak-ass Casio drum machine in the mix, which for soul and disco, uh, a lot of those were going on by that point, but... You can go all the way up there um, and probably, like I said, I've listened to like, you know, one of her, some, a lot of her later 70s stuff. There just isn't the, the uh, you know, sort of uh, degradation that, that came with disco with Ann Peebles. Um, problem with Ann Peebles? Uh, yeah, her record sold like nothing. So you can't find these records in the wild. Um, unless they're represses like this, this is a, a nice little, little repress um, on high uh, records. Um, like I say, yeah, you can't find them. They're like a hundred bucks on Discogs. It's, it's a nightmare. If you actually want like OG original pressings, you're not going to get them. That's fine. I, I uh, frankly, this is my only record I got from Man Peoples. Uh, there, are other, there are other represses, but again, I'm contending with $25 records. I wanted to at least get one. Um, and this is the one I chose, Can't Stand the Rain, uh, of course, featuring the classic title track. But again, uh, give Anna Anna a listen. Uh, her stuff is great. She's like, like a cross between Tina Turner uh, and someone else. I can't even really, but she's fantastic. And yeah, great stuff. Let's talk about my number four. Uh, of course, is Johnny Bristol. 
Uh, I, I love the Johnny Bristol story. I, I wish there was more uh, detail about it. I mean, all I'm working with is Wikipedia, all music and stuff like that. But this guy was like basically like a producer, uh, and then he became an artist later. Uh, this is his, I believe it's 1975 album, Feeling the Magic. Great album. His uh, first uh, album is uh, Hang On In There, which I'm kind of still looking for. But um, yeah, then there's one called Bristol's Cream. All of these albums I've listened to electronically, hence that's that's why they're kind of on my list. And uh, wow, bro, uh, Johnny rules. Um, great producer too. I've actually started to like look for some of the records that he produced. Uh, I just got a, an O.C. Smith record that that he did a couple of tracks on. It's okay, but um, yeah, great singer, great producer. Uh, he's, he's got a different style about him, but um, yeah, again, this is an artist, and I did, you can go right up into the 80s uh, to check him out, and it's all uh, all great stuff. Key track on this, I would say, uh, Leave My World, uh, but the whole album is great. Uh, Morgantown, North Carolina is a great jam, too. Um, but again, Johnny Bristol at number four, uh, I'm still seeking. Like, this is my only record by him, so uh, we'll see. I'm hoping I might find something in the wild. You know, we'll see. Uh, it might come as a little shock to those uh, watches of the channel. But at number three this year, Jerry Butler. <laughs> yeah, so I, I got deep into Jerry this year because um, uh, part of kind of my motif is like, not only am I looking at a lot of 70s soul, which I, I think again is the master period, I, I like my music between 67 and 75 anyway, but soul music is just, it's a golden era for me. Um, so yeah, uh, Jerry Butler, golden in this era. Uh, fantastic stuff. This is, this is the album Sweet 16 that would end his, his career, or not his career, but his uh, contract with uh, Mercury Records, where all of these classics kind of came from. Uh, great album. Uh, this is one. Uh, kind of the one that, that kind of really started it out for me was uh, the Sagittarius Movement uh, from 71, which I bought last year. It's a good album. It's not the best of kind of that period, but it is very good. I, I would say that it's superior to, to Sweet 16 and some of the later period stuff. Uh, but again, great album. This kind of started me on a path, and I was like, oh, okay, let's, let's see what we can get. This is Power of Love um, from 73, produced by... Who? Johnny Bristol, um, great record. Starts to drift towards the end. Uh, it's not his best work, um, but some of those imminent, like the the early tracks on the album are just urgent. They're they're funky. Johnny Johnny Bristol is is kind of you know, he puts his uh, he puts his mark on this album and uh, yeah, works well for Jerry. Um, better album than I thought it would be. Uh, the love we have. His duet album with Brenda Lee Eager, uh, also cool stuff. I very much enjoyed this one. Um, and then, you know, close out with, wow. I uh, have been listening to uh, Jerry Butler offering the Spice of Life from 1972, which now I'm just basically straight up confirming as the best soul double album ever rela released. In my opinion, obviously. I mean, you know, people got different ideas, but... Uh, wow, I'm still listening to this one. All four sides are great. Jam, this is just such an excellent record. It, it just makes me sad there was like very little in terms of, of um, you know, success for this album. I think it charted at like 96 or something like that on, on Billboard. This is kind of as, as Jerry's career was starting to fade a little bit, and it shouldn't have. This album, this whole LP, the best songs aren't even the singles here. The singles are like, you know, Close to You, which, Jesus, I mean, literally everybody did a cover of Close to You. It was insane. But um, I can't recommend this record enough. This is my favorite of, of that period. And I love the basically 70 to 75 period for Jerry Butler. Uh, I think it's, he's at his peak. Um, this is a guy who started in 58 with the impressions. Still ripping it in 72 uh, with the uh, Spice of Life. Great one. Okay, let's talk number two now. Uh, number two, had a bit of a fascination with this guy uh, because he's basically excellent. Seal Johnson, 
This is the sole LP that I have from him. Uh, is it because I'm black from 1969? Uh, he later kind of recorded uh, with the with the High Records label, um, uh, which I love. Uh, almost as if you know, I, I would almost say that this year was was the uh, first year that I truly got High Records, the label. Um, obviously not, you know, in any other uh, sense of the word. But um, yeah. Great album, but uh, I think he's had three or four albums on high records. I was listening to those on YouTube music like continually, you know, um, pretty much throughout the year. My number two artist, uh, and I'm still seeking plenty of uh, uh, Syl Johnson records, but again, pretty much all of his albums have something to offer with perhaps, uh, you know, a little bit of, I'm not 100% sure as he heads into the, his last album with High, which was, I think, 78 or something. Mm, I, I've heard some tracks, but I never really listened to that. But still Johnson, number two. So here we are, moment of truth, number one, not a shock. If you've seen the channel, let's talk about my man, Willie Hutch. Uh, it really started with this album. Uh, which again, I call this the best album, the best soul album of the 1960s. Uh, released, I think, 69 on RCA. Uh, fantastic album, cover to cover. Every song on this is just a stonker. It's ripping, it's, it's funky, the man's a master. In 69, after having written, um, you know, some songs for uh, The Fifth Dimension and basically kind of been like a uh, staff writer here and there, uh, he comes out uh he puts this out it's it's a it's a stunner um just got this one it's fully exposed from 1973 this was a mail call i just ordered it directly cuz i'm not going to find this one in the wild this this is his first lp on motown i think it's best uh just california my way is you know fantastic jam but this whole album is is fantastic uh i want to be where you are Wow. Uh, if you see this in the wild, you are on crack if you don't pick it up. This is, this is I think, his best 70s album. Um, and that's saying something. Because, you know, we also have to look at 1975's Ode to My Lady. Um, which, you know, there's Willie on the back. He's jamming. There's purported to be his lady. Uh, but whatever the case, uh, wow. Good one, too. Love Power is, was the big single on this. The highest charting single of Willie's career, but uh, yeah, but this album just, it rocks it, it funks it up. Um, 1976's uh, Color Her Sunshine, it's good, it's not great. Uh, Willie kind of brings it down, the funk down a, lot, a notch, he's, you know, talking about a lot of romantic jams, it's, it's a loving record, it's a, you know, uh, maybe a Sunday record with your, in the boudoir with your lady or... Or, or man, depending on, you know, your gender, or, or whatever, your preference, I suppose. Uh, good record, not his best, but glad to have it. And then, of course, Concert in Blues, 1976 also. Um, a great one, uh, Willie Hutch. Uh, so yeah, uh, really expanded the collection with that. And I'd like, I'd like y'all to keep this in mind about, about these records. Willie Hutch is not available streaming, and yet still he was number one in streaming for me. Uh, that means I'm not even going on YouTube Music. I'm going into YouTube. I'm watching people are putting up album clips. Jerry Butler, the entire period, that stuff is not available. I'm looking up album clips. I'm looking up individual track clips. I'm making makeshift, um, you know, playlists. Uh, Syl Johnson, very available on streaming. Check them out. Johnny Bristol, also very available, but it is kind of interesting that my, kind of my, my number one and my number three artists, not even really available uh, readily, like as in on um, YouTube Music and Spotify. You, you just can't get those jams. So yeah, uh, that was it. Uh, so it was uh, number one, uh, Willie Hutch, number two, Syl Johnson, number three, Jerry Butler, number four, Johnny Bristol, and number five, Ann Peebles. I listen to those the most digitally this year of any artist. To be fair, I probably listen to them very close to that, um, also on LP or analog, as some of us like to say. So yeah, uh, let me know what your top five are for the year. I mean, I'm, I'm interested. 
you know, talking my, to my, uh, you know, coworkers and stuff, they're like, man, what if, uh, not that interesting. I'm like, you're not going to tell me what your top five of the year is. Some people aren't interested. This is stuff I'm very passionate about, right? So let me know what your top five are. Uh, and uh, if not, you know, like, subscribe, join me in my quest as I uh, continue the uh, soul obsession that I have uh, created for myself here. So yeah, uh, thanks again, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.